10 years ago, as a junior in high school, I thought I had it all figured out. My life planned out to the T. I was supposed to make the varsity volleyball team, volunteer at the hospital on the weekends, and take rigorous college-level courses to impress universities with great pre-medical programs so that one day I can end up in medical school. At this moment in time, nothing could stop me. Until a morning on the way to volleyball tryouts, a red pickup truck almost T-boned me. To avoid him, I swerved and ended up driving straight into a wall. It was on August 23rd, 2012, at 8.23 a.m., my life went down a devastating, unforgettable path. The airbag popped into my face, squeezing my left eye together, leaving a scar in my retina. This car accident caused me to lose central vision in my left eye. I'm going to show you guys a couple of pictures, so bear with me. They're pretty gruesome. I look pretty terrible, don't I? We thank God for healing. But in all seriousness, I lost nerve damage on the left side of my face. My right hand was split open, leaving my thumb dangling. I had a year-long concussion where I was in and out of the hospital. When the doctors told me I would never be able to see clearly again from my left eye, I felt my spirit leave my body. I was in shock, disbelief, fear, because I knew that day was going to be the beginning of the greatest challenge of my life. Now, this talk isn't going to be about the specifics of my recovery, but more on the lessons learned after, the lessons of failure. Today, we're going to discuss how failure is actually the key to success. Through my experiences, I'm going to show you how failure allows you. It's a stepping stone towards tapping into your greatness and embodying success. All right, let's go back to the car accident. Although I was grateful I was still alive because car accidents are the leading cause of death in young adults in the United States, I still felt like the world was against me. My passion for sports felt futile as the doctors told me I would never be able to play the same again because of my unfocused vision. My dreams of becoming a cardiac surgeon seemed unachievable because of my lost depth perception. My counselor told me to drop those college-level courses because my concussion would make concentrating difficult. Everyone around me encouraging me, take it easy. Things are different now. Colleges would understand. I declined their advice, confident their concerns would not apply to me. But things got harder and harder. My body was trying to adjust and heal to its new reality. My mind was trying to play catch up, but it was too late. A month after the car accident, I failed one of those college level exams, an exam that was supposed to be the stepping stone to my science career. My teacher even asked me to reconsider dropping her course. It was at that moment I realized I was wrong. I wasn't invisible like I thought I was. A flood of new emotions overwhelmed me, and for the first time in my life, I felt like a complete failure. This new feeling scared me. Feeling like a failure was something that I've never experienced before. Failing an exam is something I've never experienced before. I grew up in a Haitian household where education was prioritized over everything else. There were only three options given to my sisters and I growing up. To be a doctor, a lawyer, or engineer. The typical Haitian parent expectation for their children. So up to this moment in time, I had only gotten all A's. Having this new profound injury flipped my life upside down. I did not know how to navigate the feelings of failure and worthlessness that accompanied my new struggles in school, sports, and daily life. I found myself in this new reality, and I realized I had to think, wonder, problem solve. What was going to be next for me? Was failure going to define me? Was this going to be a new norm I possess because of my injuries? Would I be viewed as less than because I'm now partially blind in my left eye? The more questions I asked, the more I crossed the borders into the uncertainty of failure. The high pressure to do well academically did not help. 
I felt uncomfortable knowing I'd be letting down my parents, my sisters who looked up to me, my friends and teachers who believed I could be anything, a feeling a lot of us experienced when people put us on a pedestal with certain expectations, and failure is not one of them. Then, within the same week of failing that exam and having to decide if I was going to remain in that course or not, I came upon a fortune cookie that changed my perspective forever. It said, success wouldn't taste so good without failure served as appetizers. Let's read that again. <laughs> success wouldn't taste so good without failure served as appetizers. That was it. Its simplicity hit me. My failure wasn't inhibiting me from reaching my success. Rather, my failure was the key to my success. Yes, I failed my exam, and I was not meeting the expectations I had of myself as a student. But my failure was an opportunity for me to showcase that I was still capable of being that successful student despite my injuries. My desire and passion to go to medical school and be a doctor one day was what influenced me to do the sciences. So now it was crunch time. As my perspective shifted, I realized the more uncomfortable I began to be with the idea of being a failure, the more clarity I began to have. Failure strips away the glitz and glam of success, validation, affirmation. It forces you to challenge yourself in moments of discomfort, desperation, to look, dig deep within. It forces you to sit on those uncomfortable emotions and ask yourself pivotal questions. What do I want in life? What am I truly passionate about? And how will it fulfill my purpose? The more questions I asked, the more I became motivated to find a solution to be the best version of myself. Instead of escaping, masking those feelings of uncomfortability, I embraced it. Uncomfortability is actually a time period of growth. Once I accepted that to be my new reality, to be a part of my new mindset, I began to dismantle the feelings of disappointment, shame, guilt that comes with failure, and instead embody resilience, perseverance, confidence that I was actually getting closer to my success and not far from it. Oftentimes, these characteristic traits are only personified in moments of difficulty, periods of struggle. I now view failure as appetizers, as a preparation for my next meal, a preparation necessary for the ultimate success. Subconsciously, I've changed its negative connotation to a positive one for my own benefit, so I can ace any future exam given to me despite being partially blind. If you believe you are a failure, your subconscious mind will accept and bring that forth into your life. Dr. Joseph Murphy, an Irish author and health psychologist, he explains how the subconscious mind takes the orders you give it based on what you believe is true. Therefore, if you believe there's positivity in your past failures, you can manifest positivity in your own adversities. Psychologists say when thoughts are made in the subconscious mind, impressions are made in the brain cells. It works by an association of ideas and uses every bit of knowledge you have gathered in your life to bring about its purpose. It draws on the infinite power, energy, and wisdom within you, and I believe this unlocks your untouched potential. Your untouched potential are the qualities and skills that allow you to think beyond your capacity of greatness, and that allows you to reach your future success. Once I tapped into my untouched potential, I was capable of reclaiming my confidence in my intelligence, in my abilities as a student, in my skills, and my ability to positively contribute to the world. My teacher gave me another shot and was pleasantly surprised when I became one of her top students. She's actually sitting in the audience right now. <laughs> failure, my failure, was the stepping stone to my success. And now that I view failure as appetizers, 
the journey to that next meal and success tastes so much better because of the skills I know I'm gaining along the way. Tapping into my untouched potential allowed me to have a new mindset. Mindset is another aspect of success that enhances your growth as an individual. In another book I read called The Upside of Stress by Kelly McGoggle, another health psychologist and lecturer at Stanford University, she talks about how you change your mind on stress can actually make you healthier and happier. How you view stress affects everything from your cardiovascular health to your ability to find meaning in life. The best way to manage stress isn't to reduce or avoid it, but rather to rethink and embrace it. And I believe that same concept can be applied towards failure. Changing your mindset on failure allows you to view your hiccups as assets. Ultimately, my failure became my motivation to not only do well in school, but to prove to everyone else I was still capable of success. As you can see, this failure was a stepping stone. By the grace of God, I was able to get into Brandeis University. This motivation that I had, it allowed me to remain focused in my studies. It allowed me to gain the grit to ace those exams and land a full scholarship at Brandeis University. You see, I believed my failure was going to be a limitation towards my success but I realized it made me limitless. I was limitless in my capabilities because my mindset on failure had changed. Being limitless is not about progressing to, not about believing that you're perfect or that you're never going to fail, but it's about progressing beyond what you think is possible and committing to go after it. With determination and a desire to be victorious, I was able to reach success. After college, I decided to get my master's at Tufts University School of Medicine, and I did extremely well. And now I'm living my wildest dreams at St. George's University School of Medicine, despite having this medical injury. What we need to understand is that failing is inevitable, but we must decide to fail forward towards our success rather backwards into doubt. Oftentimes, we stop chasing our dreams because failure allows these negative thoughts from hindering us to reaching those goals. You see, for me, I realized failure is an essential part to my success story. In multiple interviews I've done with people across the country from my podcast, Untouched Potential, they express how the lessons learned from their trials and tribulations actually positively contributed to their success. I've realized people who have found success has found it in such a unique, organic way. It wasn't some clean-cut road, but a road filled with obstacles and unforeseen events that allowed them to learn, build character, and reach their goals. We must remember, failure aren't setbacks. They're realignments towards what's meant for us. Failures allow you to find your reason for being, the reason why you wake up in the morning, your why. We are much more empowered when we embrace our failures because they become the keys to open up the doors to not only our potential, but our purpose, which then presents opportunities. Till this day, I am so blessed I read that fortune cookie when I did. Success wouldn't taste so good without failure served as appetizers. When we finally accomplish those goals we have set out for ourselves, we feel so much joy. But not only joy, but we realize where we came from, this success tastes so much sweeter. Failure, guys, is an essential part to your success story. So I now leave you with three questions. Have you been looking at that one failure as that thing that held you back, rather than being that thing that propelled you forward? What failure contributed to your success? And have you unlocked your untouched potential?
Thank you.